This is Phil Sarnton, the artist, the professor, the traveler. This is his classroom. This is his office. And this is his studio. This is a film about Phil Sarnton. And his art. Especially in the Finley area, there are not too many artists that have a very dedicated studio practice. And, um, you know, Phil, having been through the majority of his career at this point, I would say has, has been very consistent in his approach to, um, to making work. A very successful artist, and um, he creates amazing, amazing things, and then he's sharing his knowledge and his talent. Phil is, um, in many ways, a typical artist. You know, Free-spirited, he's um, kind of open to new ideas. Not like typical artists, I think that he has a very generous spirit. I think an artist is someone who really puts all of themselves into a, a body of work that is representative of a group to really express what others are feeling and maybe can't really say or write down, but something that really um, branches together people and creates a, a feeling. I think that that's what a true artist really means and what they really do. Philip Sugden is a painter and drawler whose work has been in galleries all over the world. Galleries in New York City, Los Angeles, Paris, and Kathmandu. According to Phil Sugden, art is you know, and I think we all project meaning onto the world around us. And um, art can be that way of projecting uh, an aesthetic meaning onto uh, anything around, anything at all. So in, in, on that, sen in that sense, art is, um, can be defined as almost anything. Bill has received grants from the National Endowment and the Ohio Arts Council. He has won a Best Documentary Award for his PBS documentary, White Lotus. He's won first place in numerous juried shows, including first place in the Toledo Museum of Art. He will soon be inducted onto the Wall of Fame in the Marathon Center for the Performing Arts in Finley, Ohio. Phil has been described as creative, dedicated, lighthearted, a genius, and an encyclopedia. Well, Carol would tell you that I, I'm almost I'm, I'm very difficult to live with <clears throat> if I don't get in the studio. Phil was born in Swanage, England in 1949. My mother and father were both uh, in the Royal Air Force. And we came over here, my mother and my brother and I came over here when I was seven. He decided to attend the New York School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. After completing his undergrad, he studied in Paris for his graduate. After schooling, he moved back to New York City, where he lived for the next 10 years and continued his life as an artist. While in New York, he met his wife, Carol. New York is a place where it, you, it is uh, dumped on you real fast because there's a lot going on, but at the same time, you have access. One day, Phil and a friend decided to hitchhike across Europe and Asia. Uh, we flew to London for $100 hitchhiked across Europe and the Middle East. We went on the Orient Express to Istanbul back then, and then, and third class, I mean, it was rough. And then we hitchhiked through the desert, we hitchhiked through Turkey, Iran, uh, Afghanistan, the Persian desert, uh, up into, through Pakistan, and um, through the Khyber, and into India. And I'll tell you, I would, if I knew what it would have been like, I wouldn't have done it. We went in there very naive, and I'm glad I did do it. We met lots of wonderful people, and, and it widened my perspective of, of the world. The six-month trip ended in the Himalayas, where he found himself in a Tibetan refugee camp. The Chinese Cultural Revolution had displaced thousands of Tibetans throughout Nepal. Phil's encounter with these refugees would act as the beginning of a series of trips back to Nepal. I learned more from 
traveling probably than I did in any school I went to. I mean, it's one thing to read about these countries. It's another thing to go and experience them. And if I were a king of the world, I would make every child right out of high school go spend six months to a year somewhere outside of their country and live with those people, maybe in a refugee camp, keep a journal, and then give them college credit for doing that. And they, Americans especially need to do that. We are, uh, we are ethnocentric, Americans are, more than any other group of people I've ever met. Phil has since traveled all over the world to places such as New Zealand, Iceland, Nepal, India, Indonesia, Australia was interesting. Well, I once had to count the, the countries. That it was in a game we were playing at the university. How many countries, who stayed in the most? And I think mine's right around 50. So just uh, things that he's seen in his travels really, I think, have made an impact in the stuff that he creates, which makes sense. So that's the way it is for anybody. Like everything that you do kind of ties into the work and it influences the work. Yeah, I would say he's just aware of um, what people are going through in various parts of the world. And I, I think that collective knowledge is really good for the students, but also for himself in the way that he's focusing on the things that should improve. People, some people do what they do because they have to do it. Otherwise, they kind of go bonkers. Um, <laughs> During his travels, he has met various world leaders and celebrities, such as the Dalai Lama of Tibet, the Archbishop of South Africa, Desmond Tutu, as well as people like Pulitzer Prize winner Oscar Huelos and even actor Robin Williams. So, yeah, it, you know, and these people, uh, they're pretty ordinary people. I mean, you know, Oscar's a great storyteller. The Dalai Lama has a lot of insight. Uh, Desmond Tutu, I mean, he's got uh, so much uh, responsibility. But these people, when you get talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, they're, they're like us. Throughout his travels, Phil has been an art professor at Bluffton University a four-year private Mennonite university located in Northwest Ohio. Phil started his teaching career in 1999 at Bluffton and has been there ever since. As, as a full-time artist, teaching as well uh, helps you to see problems with your own work. You learn a lot from teaching because you have to do research and um, a lot of that research has uh, to do directly with your own work. And it's important. Teaching is a really important part of the process, I think. For artists who are also educators, their work lives on through their students just as much as it lives on through their work. Well, way back in the day, I learned that I don't care for watercolor. <laughs> uh, it is a additive painting process that I just don't have the patience for. Um, that's one thing that he does have is patience um, with students and, and with colleagues, right? Myself included. Sometimes I, I, you know, wonder about going to different colleges and stuff like that and how my perspective would be different if I went to a different college. But Phil is definitely one of the reasons that I'm very, very glad that I came to Bluffton University. So he's not just a professor now, but he's a fellow artist and he's my friend and it's, um, I wouldn't trade that for anything. Phil has drawn and painted numerous artworks, which have sold all over the world. Too many to show in this story, but a reoccurring theme in his work is the mandala. The mandala, which originated in India, is a spiritual and ritual symbol in both Hinduism and Buddhism. Phil's most recent artwork, titled War Mandala, is a large-scale mandala which measures 8 foot by 5 foot. The piece is entirely made out of 4-inch masonite tiles. The artwork is an exploration of the absurdity of war. Each layer of the mandala explores different aspects of war, from the civilians who are killed, to companies that profit from war, to a history of U.S. conflicts. The QR code in the center takes you to a video titled Collateral Murder, 
which is video taken from an Apache helicopter in Iraq in 2007. The video shows an attack on a group of civilians mistaken as soldiers, which killed 12 men, including two Rudders journalists. The video was posted on WikiLeaks in 2010. War Mandela will be on display during his induction onto the Wall of Fame at the Marathon Center for Performing Arts in May of 2019. It's, I don't think it's political. I think it's just uh, um, to get people to think about how absurd war is, C conflict in general. Bill and his art have a very um, global mindset kind of view. He is very interested in making art that um, promotes advocacy and voice and showcases um, people and human interaction and how his uh, art can create change in the world. His relationship to his work has changed over time. I think now, perhaps because of the current political climate um, or for other reasons, um, his work has taken more of a kind of political bent to it, uh, more of a kind of social conscious um, edge. Most artists would say that they are selfish in that the work that they're making is, is an, an outward expression of how they are processing things, right? So they're emotionally attached or at least tied to the work in, in some way, shape or form. I would say Phil is probably a little bit against the grain in that regard. He, being an activist and someone who does tend to make work about um, you know, social and economic problems in the world, political problems. You know, I see it as as an exploration i'm exploring um who i am and my relationship in this universe and that's what my work's about phil believes that every person wanting to be an artist must ask themselves what they're willing to sacrifice uh you got to have your priorities in order and if you're thinking about creating things all the time then you probably won't have a choice you're just going to go in that direction if Phil Sugden has learned one thing from life, it's that all humans are interconnected to one another. Uh, the moment you see yourself as separate from someone else or separate from your environment is when the trouble starts. You know, you, you got to make the connection. Um, uh, and that, I think, underlies most of our problems on this planet is a sense of disconnection. So what does Phil plan to do next? He's told me a number of times that he's gonna work until he's dead. And that in one way or another will probably be the case. If he's not teaching, he'll be working in the studio. So um, I still think that he has a, a long time worth of studio work that he wants to, to put in. What I hope for him and what I think he'll do um, are maybe not be the same thing. What I hope for him is that his most recent documentary makes a boatload of money and he can retire on, the, on some sort of you know, romantic cliffside um, resort and just make art every day and watch the sunset. I'm just uh, cruising along, you know? I have found that I can never predict where my artwork is going, what I'm going to do next, um, or where I'm going to travel next. It's never predictable. Under all his philosophy, his artwork, his teaching, and his travels, he always has a joke to tell. Yeah, I've learned some dad jokes. He likes to joke. He's got a sense of humor. And sometimes it can be quite dirty. <laughs> One joke he said is he doesn't believe in reincarnation. Um, he didn't believe in it before, so why should he now? <laughs> like, I've heard him say it so many times, I know it by heart, but so he, he'll always come up to you and he'll say, um, what do you say to an old person if you're um, offering them apple pie? And, and then he like gets in your face and he screams, you want some apple pie? <laughs> You know, I got a call from my uh, gallery agent and he says, hey, Phil, I got some good news and bad news. And I said, okay, what's the good news? And he said, I just sold all your artwork. 
He said, oh man, that's great. What's the, what could possibly be the bad news? And he says, your doctor bought it all. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, God. This is his classroom. This is his office. This is his studio. And this is Phil. One, two, three. If you close the door, the night could last forever. Leave the sun shine out and say hello to never. All the people are dancing and they're having such fun. I wish it could happen to me. But if you close the door, I'd never have to see the day again.